All right, very good. Welcome everyone. Township, uh, Delanco Township Committee meeting April 12th, 2021. This is uh, via Zoom remote access. Normally we meet at the Municipal Building 770 Cooperstown Road in Delanco. Uh, roll call please, Mrs. Lohr. Yes, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, is he muted? Here. He here. here. Okay, great. Mrs. Brown. Patrick. Here. Ms. Holland. Here. Mr. Olette. Here. Mr. Templeton. I'm here, thank you. Uh, also present, Mr. Schwab, Township Administrator, Mr. Foxer, Township Engineer, Mr. Feinhold, Township Solicitor, Mrs. Lohr, Municipal Clerk. Uh, Mrs. Martin is... Not here this evening. correct. Uh -huh. uh, Mr. Fenimore, I don't see in the audience. Uh -huh. uh, Chief DeSanto is here. Did I miss anyone? Uh, all right, uh, flag salute, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the flag. United States of America, United States of America. and to the colors of the United States, one nation, one nation, one nation under God, God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. all. Uh, sunshine statement, Mrs. Lohr. Please be advised that proper. Notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the <laughs> County Times and Courier Post and published in the January 5th, 2021 editions. And written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Uh, this meeting is available through the Zoom uh, remote meeting platform. Um, and the login information is available on the agenda as well as on the Township website. The um, events public comments will be accepted via written letter or electronic mail, and um, they are to be received no later than six hours prior to the meeting to my attention via email or to the municipal building. And the members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting, um, public comment sessions may make their comments or have their questions via either the audio option or by typing their comment or question via the Zoom plat platform chat option. And then we have um, members of the public who are deemed to be disruptive as defined by NJAC 5 colon 39-1 may be muted after an initial warning for the duration of the public comment session and or remainder of the remote meeting session. And the agenda is available um, on the bulletin board as well as on the Delanco Township website, delancotownship.com. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, just as a preamble for tonight, uh, we've got kind of a full agenda that may in, we get into uh, some extended discussion. We also uh, plan on having an executive session following the open uh, public session. And we do have uh, several items that uh, will involve probably extended discussions there. So I anticipate that executive session will be an hour or more, and uh, there may be action following that that will come back into public. So that's kind of the game plan for tonight. Uh, start off with uh, Ordinance 2021-05, uh, amending the Township Code at Chapter 110-13, Governing Fences and Walls, to allow certain non-conforming fences to be maintained and replaced. This is the fourth reading, title only, continued public hearing. Um, Before I open it to the public, uh, we've got uh, the ordinance uh, as discussed and or as uh, on the agenda. And uh, uh, this has been a somewhat difficult process uh, for all involved, including the planning board. And uh, we also have uh, some other variations that have been circulating. Um, so let me just open it up to the public, a hearing open to the public on ordinance 2021-05. And then uh, I invite uh, the rest of my colleagues on committee uh, for their thoughts on this uh, before we go forward. Any comments from the public? State your name, address, please. This is on ordinance 2021-05, uh, uh, fences and walls only. I'll go first. Nancy Bray. I, uh, I, I purchased a property at 301 West Avenue. That was, uh, the fencing was in very, very disrepair. Uh, I purchased this property on January 20th. 
on the first week of February, we had snow for a week. This fence had been in this condition for quite some time. Um, and when I arrived at the property, there was animal access prints all over the backyard. Now, if anybody doesn't know, this has a humongous built-in pool in the backyard that's empty with no cover. So um, maybe a little bit from my background, uh, the safety instinct came immediately. We tried to board it up. It was in such disrepair that we decided to get new fence and just replace it. Due to COVID, they're not making any kind of maintenance free fence. So I went to the local Home Depot and had it replaced. With uh, waiting for my time to have it replaced, I, um, I uh, also did all of it because as we were taking it down to replace it, it was literally falling apart. The safety is the biggest concern I'm having because as you all know, you got the nature trail, you have the 10 and under ballpark and you have the playground at the end of my street. As we're sitting, as we're there almost every day, there's people roller skating, skateboarding, everybody there. It's a really great children neighborhood. If a ball goes over that fence at four foot, these kids don't go in and tell mom and dad, they just climb the fence and they go in. If they lean over, it goes in the pool, we've got a problem. The safety of the children have to come first. And I got a notice in the mail saying that I violated replacing the dilapidated fence and deteriorated fence, because when you do that, you have to put up four foot. There is no way on a nine foot deep pool that I would put up a four foot fence for the safety of the children of Delanco. Mm -hmm. So that's my concern. I. I just don't, I don't know much about it. I, I got the notice. I just figured I'd jump in and say, you know, what are we thinking here? I'm just replacing in kind. Mm -hmm. This fence has been like this for years. I'm trying to do the right thing. Is there uh, the fence you're talking about? Is that the, the fence around the pool or is it the yard fence that also? The, the existing fence that was there did not, was not just behind the pool. It was also extended out the sides of the um, of the house. Okay. <clears throat> but it was in bad shape. We took two by fours holding it up when I acquired the house. All right. But it was just too far gone. But when I saw the animal prints, I'm just thinking, even for the safety of the animals, you know, somebody's going to get hurt. So I replaced it. And I guess I'm at fault for doing that. So... My opinion and is I think you guys really need to think about that in replacing kind. I think the six foot is the way to go. I live in Cinnamons and it's exactly that. I also have an in-ground pool. I have a six foot fence. This oh, by the way, the fence had the backer boards on the outside. That means kids could climb it, the, the pre-existing fence. Okay. So the, the fence was in violation from the beginning with a pool. Hmm. Richard, what's the, uh, or Harry, I don't know if you're familiar with this, or what the, uh, I thought it was a four foot fence for swimming pools. It's five. No. Five. At five. least five. At least five. Right. The key was to come in to get a permit and then all that would have been explained mm -hmm. and dealt with. And the pool, of course, needed to be covered or having nothing to do with the fence. But, so that has nothing directly to do with this ordinance. True. It has to do with the permit process. And Nancy, you know, Jeff would explain all that to you and worked out the details. I apologize for not coming in to do that. I just took the safety route first. And the, yeah. and the house was sitting empty for a year. Yeah. This pool was full six foot water. I emptied it for the safety of the pool because the pool needs repair. But then I also repaired the existing fence, just thinking that wasn't enough. That, that was the right thing to do. Sure. That's that's it there, right? 
in the corner. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, and that's not related to this ordinance, but it's something obviously that you know we should. You should, you should get with uh, Jeff, the zoning officer, to determine what's proper and what you should have done legally okay. and see how to work that out. It doesn't affect the terms of this ordinance. Okay. I understand, Richard. I'm just thinking if you're going to modify or you're going to go forward, is there any chance that there can be replacing kind for the safety of the of people that have in-ground pools? All right. Well, that's, that's a requirement to... Uh, to do the five foot. I don't know what was, if six foot was there before. Yes. If they had a permit, then you can replace in kind. That's correct. If there was a permit, so there may be a permit on record. If there's a permit on record that that was approved, then you can replace in kind. It has nothing to do with this ordinance. This has to do if somebody wants to put a six foot where you don't have a permit. It's I grandfathering in. I will check with Jeff tomorrow. Yeah, give thank Jeff, you. Jeff, Jeff uh, Reeve a call and see if you can get this untangled and and All right. get, take care of. Properly. Yeah, I'm sure his contact information was on the notice. Yep. Okay. okay. Thank uh, you. Any, thank you. Any uh, any com any additional comments from the public on this ordinance? Uh, committee members, uh, yours. I. I I have a question. Um, I want to know exactly on what we're voting on. There was a separate um, yeah. resolution that Doug did, and it had the ordinance attached, and it had some of the wording changed. Doug, is that the one that we're definitely voting on now, where it says um, uh, provided two off street parking places are supplied and the fence is at least 10 feet behind if a facade is defined, not including any open or fully enclosed porch. What is? Yeah. So I went back and listened to the, um, the last meeting, which Aaron patiently sent to me about five times until I could get it to work. Uh, and the, the ordinance that was attached to what I transmitted was the ordinance with the comments from the board, which as I understand it was basically, look, if, if it's going to proceed, these are the revisions that we're suggesting. So we asked our inspector, uh, I assume it was Jeff, to go out and look at that and make sure that that still would allow for what we were trying, so the sort of narrow window of what we're trying to accomplish and the one house in particular. Uh, and the answer was yes, that that is this, this ordinance as recommended with changes by the board would still work for what we're trying to address. On, on Vine Street? On Vine. Okay. So I don't have any issue with that. If, if the board is recommending that and the governing body is comfortable with that, it's going to address what we're trying to address. And we could make those amendments and my view, they're not so material that we have to go through the whole re-advertisement process again. It's basically a further clarification of what area we're permitting six foot fences that are being grandfathered to, to remain, which is basically forward of the rear building line uh, up to uh, 10 feet behind the front facade. Now, the... Um but this word parallel, running parallel to the front and rear building line, the, is was that true. supposed to be perpendicular? Or because Fern had mentioned that, no? It's supposed to be parallel? That's what we had originally. We had parallel. We talked right? about that last month. And mm -hmm. the conclusion was to take it out. Just If you just take it out, then it's, still in it's there. clear. But it's in the version I sent over. It's it, there's a line running through it. I don't know if it came through that way, but there I I put a line through parallel. It's not a line through my copy. Yeah. Okay. Last, so I guess it sentence, should say. Covers it. Pardon? The last sentence says this shall apply to the section of fencing running parallel to the front line and fence running along the side line, both. So I I thought that was what why parallel is correct because that's that piece. Kate, that we're right. talking about it goes across the driveway that's the parallel and then right. the piece running along the side property line 
is what separates them out from the from the neighbor. So I thought that last sentence parallel is correct as long it's as correct. you say okay. and the fence I don't see running any along parallel. The yeah, there is no parallel. There's no parallel crossed out in mine at all. Okay. Because it that doesn't exist. must have been lost in the middle. But I think it's up to you guys. And I've joked around before. I'm not, there's a reason I became an attorney and I'm not a, a math major. But parallel, I think if you take that out and you just read that without parallel in it, it's still clear the two sections yeah. of fence we're talking about. Right. No. So rather than try to figure out parallel to what, perpendicular to what, if you just if we just describe it as uh, the the portion running, you know, the section of fencing running to the front and rear building line it, from yeah. the side of the house, I would take it out. Yeah, I think you're right. I would take it out so it's no confusion because it just says fence running to the front and rear building line. So I don't know. Anyone else want to jump in and stir this up some more? <laughs> uh, just, uh, from the comments that were uh, made by the uh, Joint Land Use Board of, uh, I guess, approving all illegal fences or fences that had not gotten permits, uh, that was a concern, uh, but Mr. Heinhold's uh, logical uh, analysis of this is a four-foot fence would be allowed in this area under ordinance, and there's already a six-foot, so we're talking two feet in height, uh, and uh, it, it just seems to make common sense that uh, this two feet in height is not going to be uh, a detriment uh, to what we're trying to accomplish in town uh, as far as, uh, I guess, light and air coming through, uh, especially on this particular uh, location. So uh, again, uh, I think, uh, at least in my opinion, this ordinance deals with this particular issue, but does not give a blanket uh, approval of all illegal fences in town. Uh, th that's the way I interpret this. Exactly. I agree, Fern. What's, what's the um, 10 feet behind the facade? Is that the... Front building line, I would say, the front of the house. That's yeah. the facade. Well, so Michelle's... when you look at the definition of facade in our code, it says that any wall of a uh, structure that is visible. So that could mean a, uh, the sidewall too. So I was I was gonna ask if you wanted to add the word front. Yeah, I, I think front is intended there, Janice. But if you look at the rest of it, they're ta she's trying to define the fact that you're talking about the front facade, I mean, the main right. structure right. of the house versus right. a porch, which may extend even further mm -hmm. off of that. Right, so do you wanna add front there? I think it's a good idea. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because facade is defined as any wall of a building that is visible to the public, yeah. but visit, visible publicly. Well, that's what, what I thought the ambiguity was. If, if someone had a porch extension there, that, that would be considered the facade. I, I see what you're saying. But no, I don't think that's what she intended by the way the comment was transmitted. Well, she says as defined, so as defined in our code, obviously, because she says as defined not including any open or fully enclosed porch. So that's what she was intending, right. front as defined. So yeah, adding I mean, the front just clarifies it. I, I think it is an important clarification. And I think that that was her intent though, is not to make it ambiguous. She was referring to the front of the house. And I think if that if we go back to last summer when we first communicated with the board and got some feedback, that remains consistent with the concern that when you have a house facade and you put a six foot fence right along the very front of the facade, you can get almost like a um, compoundy looking, you know, especially right. if houses start to do it next to each other. Um, so that I think that is consistent with that concern. So that's why she's saying to just, if it's 10 feet behind that, it's gonna at least give it that 
differentiation and depth, which is makes Good. sense. To me. Yeah. Where did the two off street parking spaces come about from? And and is that in the four foot language now? No. No. Well, no. no. Yeah. Like it just became even more heavy handed than, than it was supposed to. Yeah. Well, I mean it doesn't it doesn't have any um bearing on this particular property because there's a driveway and I mean Vine Street, I mean, you're lucky if you get a parking place in front of your house there. Uh, so I don't know how you can define uh, parking places in any property because it's a public road. So it doesn't it doesn't really provide a two off street parking spaces are supplied. How how can we supply? How can any resident supply two parking places? Yeah, I, I'm really glad, uh, Christine and Kate, that you're bringing this up, if I, if I may, Mayor, um, I, because that's one thing that from a um, deputy zoning officer and trying to administer that or, or the two off street parking spaces supplied would actually, um, I, I know where the board was coming from. They didn't want bringing forward any fence uh, into the side, up the side yard and eliminating any parking because parking in many places in town is a premium but you're in effect kind of knocking anyone out here who already doesn't have off street parking you're saying unless you can move to um off street parking spots onto your property you can't do this so we're you know kind of just canceling out so many people in town there that don't even have off street parking already so i mean i, I understand what um you know, maybe the ordinance could say, provided that no par existing off-street parking spaces are eliminated. He, th yeah. By the way it's written here, it's that if you want to do this, you have to provide two off-street parking spaces, and maybe you didn't even have any before. Exactly. The way this, is, this is the way this is written and how it would be interpreted in the, in the office, yeah. trying to, um, you know, do these zo zoning ordinances. I mean, zoning I think it should permit. just be deleted. I think it should just be deleted, that portion, because... You cannot provide, no resident can provide off street parking in this town. Jesse, it's public. The roads are public, right? Well, we, uh, you can, if you have a driveway, but if your driveway's not, I have a driveway, but my driveway's not long enough. If I didn't have the extra lot that I bought, I wouldn't have two, pay, two places. I'd only have one. Park. So, yeah. this well, particular I driveway, uh, and next to this house only has one space. Yeah. Our code does provide that any new residential uh, building must provide two off street parking spaces and garage space. If you have a one car garage counts as one and then your driveway would be another. Right. Um, so new residential must provide two off street uh, parking spaces. But here coming from a deputy zoning officer standpoint, if I'm looking at this and say, okay, you, you know, 10 feet, you got that. But can you provide with two off street parking spaces? Well, no, I don't have any now. Then you can't do this. Right, right, well, exactly. Are we in agreement to strike that uh, strike that clause? Uh, provided two off street parking spaces are supplied. Um, eliminate that. Or, or maybe no parking spaces may be eliminated. So, so I think um, I want to just go back to the point of the whole ordinance, which is to grandfather in existing conditions. It doesn't mean you get to move the six foot fence closer to the street. Right. And in, the in theory, somebody could have a four foot fence all the way up to the front facade that's permitted under the code. Right. So I, I, I kind of look at this when we got the comments, just in the context of, is this still gonna get us from point A to point B? The answer is yes, but, the, but to Chris's question and then to, to the comments and, and Janice's concern and enforcement, I agree if we just strike it, we're. There, there's nothing that anybody can do in operating under this amendment that will eliminate parking spaces. Right. So are we in agreement. In agreement to strike that uh, provided two part off street parking spaces are supplied colon. Delete yes. that. Well, we need provided 
and then pick up where it says the fence is at least 10 feet. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. All right, yeah. leave, leave provided. And add front to facade. Is that delete facade replaced with front or? Add front facade. facade. Add the word front in front of facade. All right. All right. Now I've worn my eraser down. Uh, okay. Anything else? Now, is that a, are these substantive changes that we got to start think, over? Well, again, it's it doesn't really materially change the intent and purpose of the ordinance, which is to allow for very limited grandfather within this section of the side yard. So right. I'm comfortable that we can proceed. Okay. With the, all the issues that we're having with just this fence ordinance, uh, I'd like to propose that. In the fall, September, October, you know, after we uh, are finished with uh, our budget and then the marijuana issues, uh, where we have more time, that we form a subcommittee, get members of the Joint Land Use Board, uh, a couple members from the Township Committee, and let's really look at this fence ordinance that we have here in town. Uh, it's just all over the ballpark, and as we ride around town and we we see the fences, you know, some comply, some don't. Uh, and what really makes sense to our town, you know, uh, should it be just a, a standard, you know, uh, three foot in the front and then anywhere from the uh, front facade back is six foot or four foot or five foot, whatever, whatever you know, uh, the subcommittee would come up with recommendations uh, to look at the fence issues uh, and try and clarify it so that uh, the code enforcer uh, at town hall or our employees, you know, have a document that they can look at and read with common sense without having to try to interpret what's being said uh, and making it easier for the residents uh, to comply with our ordinance. Excuse me, can I add one thing to that? You got to also look at the nature of the property. The pro my property in question is a corner lot. So, so the type of property also has some obstacles when you're putting a fence up, especially when you have a pool in the background that could potentially be directly behind the house to the side of the house or whatever. So there are other things, not all the compliances of where you're putting the fence works for the locations of the, you know, the layout of the property, so to speak. Agreed. Very true. I mean, we've been wrestling with this uh, since last July, uh, and the planning board's deeply involved, and, and there was a lot of uh, varied opinions uh, from the planning board, uh, so as, as we, we've heard tonight. So um, are we good to move forward on this, or, or not? I'd like to make a motion to move forward with these corrections. Right. Um, just yeah. one proceed. I'm sorry. Procedural question for Doug. Doug, um, will this need a reasons resolution? Just for the record. Yes. Uh, so the, the the board characterized their response as an inconsistency determination. The resolution I drafted addresses that in in sort of two ways. Uh, so they should adopt so, this if that after they adopt the ordinance. Yeah. So if we get a majority to adopt the ordinance then immediately after that we would need to do the reasons resolution and that also needs three affirmative votes okay a minimum all right i'm going to close this portion of the uh I'm going to close to the public on this ordinance and uh a motion on ordinance 2021-05 can i comment before we motion go for it i just would like to uh confirm that the joint land use board does not bless this uh, amendment to the ordinance that they would prefer to keep it as uh, apply for your variance. Is that correct? Um, I mean, I don't know how to, the, the, the response that we got, when, when we introduce an ordinance that amends our zoning code provisions, the role of the board 
primarily is what's called a consistency determination. And they're supposed to look at the ordinance and say, is this consistent with the master plan? They did a memo and voted saying, no, it's not consistent. My resolution that I drafted, I think that, that determination is um, not legally correct. Um, but even if it is legally correct and we defer to the board and say, yes, that's your determination, that's what you've made, it gives our reasons as to why we're still proceeding with this amendment. And it's because it's so narrowly ta tailored and all we're doing is allowing existing dilapidated conditions to be replaced in the same location at the same height. Uh, so it's a very narrow scope. I, I'm, I'm just really sorry we've uh, taken a whole year with this. I, I can only imagine the dollars spent on this discussion uh, between all the professionals and the township um, employees, uh, you know, all because one man, you know, wanted to replace his worn uh, crappy fence. And I had been stating all along that there should be a provision in the ordinance or, or be the zoning officer. The zoning officer should say, hey, if you abut a corner property, and it's okay with your neighbor, then put the six foot fence there. But we don't we don't do that. We beat something up and spend a lot of money. I, I still honestly I'm I'm on the fence with this, no pun intended, but you know, we do have a board, you know, we have the jointly and use board, and you know, if they wanna if there it should be an easier process to go in. I think the zoning officer should have the power to sign off on what's right, what's not right. You have to bend some rules because as Nancy Bray is saying, you know, there are safety concerns in corner properties uh have uh have issues and um also i had heard a four foot fence you know there's dogs that can jump a four foot fence with no problem on it. so if you put the four footer next to the end of the house uh, i had a dog well i still have him he's just old now he can't jump nothing but uh he would jump our four foot fence and run down to the 7-eleven and i had to go chase him so I, I i'm willing to just pull the plug on this and let the ordinance stay the way it was and just stop wasting time and money on it thank you well said, John. Okay, so Mayor, there is a motion um, by Ms. Holland to adopt Ordinance 2021-5 with the changes that were discussed. Okay, I have a second. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. No. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. And Mr. Templeton? Yes. Motion carries. We'll see how this works. Hey, hey, you need you the have the, do you have the information there that you need to do the next step then, Janice? The, the resolution? Yes. Okay, and you're gonna send me the, uh, the updated version since there was a few different drafts out there? I will send it to you. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice okay. evening, everyone. Hi, Nancy. Good Good Nancy. Nancy. Do you vote on the consistency resolution no, now, Doug? I'm sorry? Yeah. When, when will they vote on the consistency resolution now? Or right now. Right, right, right now. now. Okay. okay. Someone's got to make a motion on that. Okay. So we're, go yeah. we're going to give that resolution 2021-61. Okay, right. Okay. All right. Resolution number 2021-61. This is the reasons resolution in support of proceeding with adoption of ordinance uh, uh, 2000, uh, 2021 05, despite this Lanco Township Joint Land Use Board's master plan inconsistency determination. And I believe Make everyone should too. have had a copy of that circulated previously. A motion, please. Um, I'll move to adopt the resolution. Second. Second by Ms. Fitzpatrick. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown. No. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. And Mr. Templeton. Yes. Thank you. Doug, are there any changes to that resolution or can I go ahead and uh, certify that as was sent uh, by you? I didn't receive any changes, so I think it's adopted. Yeah, I, think, I think there was a couple typos on there that Chris pointed out. Okay. If you want to just share those, then we can clean them up. Okay. I thank everybody for their hard work and uh, 
Etch-a-Sketch and paper dolls and all the drawings and diagrams on the back of envelopes, uh, the good work of the planning board and, and uh, trying to dissect this and, and figure it out. And as we all know, uh, one size does not fit all. And it's, uh, as we've all learned, it's extremely difficult to craft the English language into something that covers a town of 4,500 people and all the combinations of yards and so forth. So appreciate all the time and effort that went into this. And we'll see how it works. Next item, Ordinance 2021-06, uh, uh, amending chapter 295 governing vehicles and traffic to create subsection 31.2, making the provisions of subtitle one of title 39 with various traffic regulations applicable to Dolan project at block 1900 lots 5.02, 5.03 to prohibit tractor trailers from making a right turn out of the exit. This is second reading by title only in public hearing. Uh, hearing is open to the public for ordinance 2021-06. Uh, Any comments, please, on this ordinance alone? Hearing and seeing none. Nothing in the chat. And there is nothing in it for the record, nothing in the chat for ordinance five either. Very good. Hearing is now closed to the public. Any comments from the committee on this? Questions? Motion, please, on ordinance 2021-6. So, so moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Fitzpatrick, second by Mr. Olette. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. Ordinance 2021-7, stormwater control, ordinance repealing and replacing sections 100-42.1 through 100-42. 0.17 of chapter 100 and amending chapter 50-63 of the code of Tank Township of Delanco. This is second reading title only public hearing. Hearing is now open to the public ordinance 2021-07 and stormwater. Nobody wants to talk about stormwater. <laughs> <laughs> Not as right. Except when it's raining. No. Not, nothing in the chat. I'm surprised. All right. Hearing is now closed to the public. Uh, any questions, comments by committee on the stormwater ordinance? Or Mr. Fox? Harry's uh, muted. Yeah. Yeah, Mayor, as, as I think everyone knows, but I can point out to the public, um, the, the state has mandated that um, every township adopt a, uh, a stormwater ordinance that, that meets their minimum standards. And, and that's basically what the town is just doing here is they're, they're adopting the state's minimum standards. And if there's something along the line on this that we should do something different, uh, or you here in your professional channels, Mr. Fox, let us know and we'll tweak it. Absolutely. Uh, hearings now close to the public on ordinance uh, 21-07. Motion please on this ordinance. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Brown, second. Christine. Ms. Holland, roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Uh, public comment statement purpose. So the public comment session is to allow residents to share information and or views with the town Palenco Township Committee. Since the committee may be hearing the information for the first time, it's not always possible to have issues and questions settled within the public comment session. Uh, report of advanced remote meeting comments and questions. This section is to acknowledge, read those comments and questions received by the municipal clerk in advance of the remote meeting, either by via electronic email or written letter as report required by NJAC 5 colon 39 one at Sequitter. Members of the public participating live in this meeting will be given the opportunity for comments and questions during the meeting in one or both of the public comment sessions. Meeting is now open to the public for comments and questions. This is session one. Have you received any questions, comments for this? Yeah, for the record, the only ones that I've received so far um, pertain to the, the cannabis discussion that you're going to have on the 19th. So I will hold those um, emails and correspondence to, to the meeting on the 19th. Other than that, no, no, nothing else for this evening as far as advanced comment. Any questions or comments in the uh, the audience, members of the public? 
Present. Hearing no questions or? Nothing in chat at Android this time. The uh, comment question section of the meeting is now closed to the public. There'll be a second opportunity at the end of the agenda. Introduction of the uh, 2021 municipal budget. Uh, Mr. Schwab, would you like to like the floor to Thank you. Give your annual uh, soliloquy. Yes, my annual soliloquy. I'll try to make it brief. Uh, we'll put lots of information on the website this week once it's introduced. Uh, in the budget message, uh, one of the key things is that we had an experience this past year that uh, none of us want to go through again, but fortunately, uh, due to uh, assistance from the state, federal, and county governments and the uh, work internally, we were able to uh, offset most of our COVID-related costs, and we're looking to uh, continue as normal. So the 2021 budget was developed under the assumption that township operations will continue as normal. The appropriations, are, which is the spending portion, are up by 135000 from last year. The available surplus anticipated in the budget is up by 200,000. To offset a portion of that, our anticipated revenues are up by about 33, 36,000. Uh, the end, the assessed value, the key thing is our assessed valuation, the rateables is called, is up by over 4 million due to the new construction. That's only a small piece of it. The result of all these calculations is a local purpose municipal tax rate of 1.075 per hundred of assessed valuation, which is an increase of 1.38 cents or 1.3 percent higher than last year. If we use the average uh, residential assessment consistent with prior years and what currently is of about 190,000, the average property tax is $2,042, which is an increase of about $26. We have a public hearing scheduled for Monday, May 17th not the first meeting of May, but the second meeting of May at seven o'clock. So all this information will be out there and uh, hopefully the public will be make comments either before or at that meeting. If anyone's got any detailed questions, we're around. Anything else, Mayor? Well done. Thank you for the good work and all the detail that you give us to make, uh, make some good decisions. Uh, resolution 2021-54, a resolution introducing the 2021 municipal budget, set public hearing for May 17, 2021 at uh, 7 p.m. and authorized publication thereof. A motion, please. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Olet, second by Mr. Brown. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. <clears throat> Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. Thank you. Well done by all. Comments and reports. Uh, Mr. Schwab, you're up first. Thank you. Um, you know, you have the assessor's report. I just went through the budget, which has been taking a lot of time. Uh, as, as Janice mentioned, uh, you have a uh, public input session at the beginning of next week's meeting on the uh, cannabis uh, use, land use issue, we put together a significant package of information, same information that we all receive is now on the website so that any resident who wants to know the same information as we have can read all that or part of that and be in a position to make a comment. So hopefully everyone's looked at that. There was a cover memo that was sent out by uh, email blast. So hopefully, uh, and we sent it out to Joint Land Use Board, EAB, Economic Development, so the people who might have something to say will say it. The key thing is you got to make a decision quickly uh, or you don't have any control over it. The only other thing I want to mention that I'm going to uh, send out to you this week, but it's too difficult to explain in a long email, is whether or not to do a resolution supporting a uh, bill that's in the, the Senate, state Senate, creating a local part to the public employee retirement system. Uh, just trying to briefly point out that, as we all know, the pension systems are underfunded. And one of the problems is that actuarially, there's supposed to be X number of dollars and not enough as it seems to have been put in. 
one of the things that the League of Municipalities has pointed out many times is the pension system covering non-public safety employees is combined between state employees and non-state employees, mostly being county authorities and municipalities. The non-state employees get a you know, employers get a bill every year and pay 100% of that bill. The employees have it deducted from their paychecks. That's sent in. It's pointed out that uh, the local part, the portion that would fund local employees, is 65% funded, but the state part is only 31% funded. So the net is 52%. There's a target of 75% before there can either be cost of living increases or considered stable. The police and fire one has been separated out and set up in a different way. And so if the state legislature and the governor thought that was a good idea for public safety pensions, the same idea should go for the non-public safety employee pensions. And to separate those two things out, have a separate board, half of which are appointed by management, half of which are appointed by labor, and then three and three, and then they pick uh, their, their chairperson. So I'm going to send this out to see whether or not you would agree that this all makes sense. Generally, the way that legislation gets adopted is if the state legislature sees that the constituents, which in this case are municipalities, think it's a good idea. And the only way they can formally do that is if you adopt a resolution supporting it. So this is my way of explaining why you're going to be receiving this resolution and ask whether or not you'd be willing to adopt it as part of the consent agenda next week. Um, yes. Has the New Jersey League um, of Municipalities commented on it? They're the ones who proposed it. This came from them. Okay. So that's all I have at this point in time. And I appreciate the time. Appreciate that you guys read everything that we send you. We sent you a lot of stuff to put you on the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see, professionals. Mr. Heinold. Uh, I think everything I have is going to be covered in executive tonight and Harry will probably talk about his meeting with the county, the county contractor on uh, 200 Ash Street use, use of that property while they work on the county contract. So I'll just jump in if, if needed at that point. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fox. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll touch on the uh, highlights of, of my report. Um, Cornerstone development, um, they finally did fix their basins. Um, I don't know if you recall, but there was no bond posted for that development. Um, so when we, when they were coming in for acceptance, um, their stormwater basins were not working properly. And um, what we had them do was put a bond just for those basin repairs. Uh, that was close to a year ago, I guess. They finally have done that, the basins are complete. And I will be preparing a letter um, re recommending that the project be accepted and the, uh, the bond money can be released. Um, and put that on next week's agenda. Okay. The uh, 2020 uh, road program, um, all the concrete work has been completed. They started paving on um, Lilac. Uh, the base course is almost complete. Uh, they'll be finishing that tomorrow and, and uh, top coursing that. When they finish that street, they're going to move over to Spruce. Um, that should only take about a day, a day and a half to finish that. Um, when they're completed with that, then they're going to move over to Walter. Um, so, so it is moving along, and I would anticipate it should, it should, the project should be complete by the end of the month. Harry, I have a question on Walter. Mm -hmm. Are they correcting the drainage issues that have existed there for a couple of years now? Uh, on Orchard? Orchard yeah. and Walter, yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. They are? Okay. Yeah, that's um, all been regraded, um, and we adjusted the handicap ramps to, to make that, that flow. Because I noticed the other day after it rained, there was a lot of water laying there. Yeah, yeah. When we're done, hopefully that won't be, the water won't be there. Okay. Um, but yes, that, that was definitely addressed. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the 2021 uh, local aid, uh, the plans have been submitted to the state, um, and, and we, we're handling that the same as we did last year. 
where the local funds and the state funds will be combined into one contract. Um, so we have to wait for the state's approval before we can go out on, on any of that work. Um, I, would, I would anticipate a couple of weeks for the state to get back to us. And we're looking at uh, trying to make an award for the project in June. Um, we did send a copy of the plans to the Shade Tree Commission uh, for their comments um, to make sure that we're on the same page on, on, on the trees. Uh, okay. Once I receive their comments, I can adjust that. That would be minor revisions to the plan if there's anything. Um, the Hickory Street and Chestnut Street drainage project, that is complete. Um, the contractor just has to seal the, the, the asphalt, um, which is a minor punch of sight on. But other than that, all the pipe has been installed and, and it's functioning pretty well. Um, so, so that project worked out, worked out nicely. I went out after the last storm and, and it's actually improved the area already. Um, so, so that has been completed. Um, the uh, the uh, 2017 park grant, that's on the agenda for the final uh, invoice and change order. That's the one where Thor came in and, and we did some extra work, so we used up all the county money. Um, so, so that project is, is complete at this point. And then Newton's Landing head wall. Um, we have an issue there with the head wall, which is adjacent to the new Greenway Trail. Um, is failing. Uh, I think I explained that once before on, on the reasons why it failed. Um, but we, I, I did meet with Pearson, who is the contractor for the, uh, the trail. Uh, and I met with uh, Sewer. And um, I also met with um, the person who did the, uh, the chestnut tree change. Um, we're going to look at it as a um, possibly, well, probably an emergency situation. And we can just get quotes to to do the work to repair the head wall um, and get it safe again. Uh, and I am coordinating that, whether we use Pearson or not, I'm co coordinating the work with Pearson because it's, like I said, it's directly adjacent to the work that they're going to be doing. Um, the town hall COVID pass through window, that's complete. I'm sure everyone has probably seen it by now. Um, so that, that is done. I just have to write a final acceptance letter to the construction office. And, and then close that out. Uh, the Nukegas Greenway, um, that's what uh, Doug alluded to. I met with the, the contractor uh, for 200 Ash um, and John Fenimore met with us also. Uh, the contractor is going to do, um, this is going to, to clean up any dead trees that are out there, uh, any brush, debris, uh, and clean up the area as best we can. He's going to stone the, uh, the area that he's going to be using um, with a, a typical driveway type stone. Um, he's going to be using that mostly for a staging area for his um, traffic control and his concrete sub. Um, so they'll be parking the backhoe, probably just the backhoe, a dump truck, uh, and they will have some material stored there as well. Um, Doug is, is working on the agreement. Um, I sent him my letter. Uh, I just got that to him today um, to what to include in on that, um, the, the agreement. Um, we also went over to Field of Dreams, the access road. Is that the, the access road to Field of Dreams is our, the major access for this, this whole side of the uh, project. Um, it was, there was concern brought up that, that the road be maintained. So the contractor is going to maintain that road. Um, he's taking pre-construction videos and photographs and has to be restored to original condition or better when it's done. Um, I talked to, to John Fenimore as well on that. We may have, the contractor is going to have millings for this project and he can deliver those millings for us on, on at least a portion of the roadway and grade that out. Um, so it'll, it'll actually make it a little bit better than when he's done than what it is now. Uh, so they're, they're willing to work with from that. Um, and that's all I have at this point. I mean, there's a lot of potholes on that road. So yeah. um, is it going uh, to, to restore it to where it is? I mean, that, that's it's not funny good. you said that because when I met with him, that's exactly what he said. 
And okay. so when he's all done, he's going to go out and dig all the potholes back in place again. Yeah. So that's the way it was. <laughs> okay. Um, no, they, that's he's going to bring in um, the asphalt millings, or the, it's it's the crushed up asphalt from other roads. Right. He's going to bring that in and, and smooth it out. Um, Good. So, so it will be better. better. Than it was. Good. Also, Doug did draft the uh, resolution for the next meeting, authorizing the agreement uh, for the use of 200 ash based on uh, Harry's report. So you'll see that on next week's agenda. Thanks, Richard. Yeah, I'll get Janice, I'll get that to you in time for the agenda package. And uh, uh, Harry, uh, next time you talk with Pearson, as far as uh, storing stuff at 200 ash, it just popped into my head. Uh, uh, it, it might be, uh, Good to have them maintain a clear way from the, the gate area to the building in case fire or EMS has to get in and, and get access to the building that they don't have equipment there that uh, becomes an obstacle course and makes it difficult to get uh, whatever they need, you know, emergency services needs to get close to the building for whatever reason. So they can keep that entrance way clear. Absolutely, that, that's a good point. I, I, I'll add that um, to my, my notes to, to Don so that we make sure we actually get that in, in the agreement. All right. Uh, any questions for Mr. Fox or Mr. Heinhold before we move on? All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, Chief DeSanto, there you are. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, uh, I just want to start off with the uh, parking that we were asked to look into, myself, Lieutenant Tilger, and Mr. Fox. Uh, specifically the parking on Burlington Avenue in front of the new business uh, called Pine Out. Uh, Mr. Fox got back to me and confirmed that the uh, sight lines would permit uh, two additional parking spots on Burlington Avenue. As you know, that's a county road, so there is a process for us to get approval from the county before we can uh, technically legally permit vehicles to park there. And uh, believe it or not, the, the process is we would introduce and pass our ordinance allowing it. And then um, the township engineer would have to provide a sketch. I asked if it had to be the township engineer and they indicated yes. And our ordinance has to pass before I even present it to them. Uh, it doesn't make much sense. So I, I thought we would send them a draft, but they want us to present, introduce and pass the ordinance. And then once it's passed, submit that to the uh, township Highway Department, I'm excuse me, the County Highway Department with an attached sketch. So um, I just need you to authorize Mr. Fox to do the sketch. And if you want to, Mr. Einhold to do the the uh, ordinance or or Ms. Ms. Lohr, just let me know. And I have the footage and the area that's gonna be needed. All this for a muffin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so that's the, you know, that that's the process to get parking on the county road. All right. Well, in agreement that that's a worthy path to follow, the chief outlined. Yes. Yes. I hear yes. no objections. Okay. Uh, Doug, I'll send you the measurements or the the area sure. that needs to be designated, and I'll forward that to you. And Mr. Fox, once we get the ordinance passed, I'll ask you to go ahead and do the sketch. Yeah. Hopefully we're gonna have first reading next week, right? Should be simple enough to just have first reading next Monday. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. Uh, and while we're uh, doing parking, there was a um, piece in Newton's Landing, which I was asked to look at uh, potential, um, I guess, potential issues. And it's just a small patch of roadway that's that's actually on Emory Way. And uh, with that new uh, section on John Mayer Way. Uh, so on Emory Way, between Newton's Landing Boulevard and John Mayer Way, there is a particular little section uh, as you make the right onto uh, Emory Way from Newton's Landing Boulevard. And then uh, there's a very short distance before you make a right back onto John, on John Mayer Way. I, I can see that as a potential problem uh, especially for larger vehicles. Uh, the radius is pretty tight because you're going to be making two right-hand turns uh, very quickly. So as we're changing the ordinance of no parking, I would just add that 
as well. And um, and it's just a small portion. It's not going to really affect uh, the residents, but it will prevent future vehicles and construction vehicles from parking there and, and yeah. obstructing that turn onto John Mayer Way. Good catch. Thank you, Jesse. I appreciate that. All right. well, yeah, it's uh, Kate had uh, a constituent uh, ask her to have that checked out. So I'm in agreement with that. Um, the next uh, one item I want to bring up is a body worn camera grant. Um, it's actually not included in this year's budget in the police department. I held it back and um, you know, sometimes good things happen. So the uh, state is offering uh, $57 million to be distributed out to police departments. And it includes departments that already have body cameras. Um, the allotment is based on a number of cameras requested. We're permitted to ask more cameras than officers, but within a reasonable number. And, um, and we're also asked to look at a five-year um, window. It could be less than five years, but no more than five years. So I have the application completed, done with my uh, proposed uh, implementation, or I guess requiring of the additional cameras. Um, you know, we're on the pace to add cameras every year anyway. So I think this is, comes in, uh, you know, very uh, needed time. And uh, they're doing something unusual. Uh, they're calling it a reimbursement grant, but for the first year, 2021, they're allowing you to get a portion of your proceeds before you make a purchase. And what they're doing is they're allowing you to get up to 20% of your, um, what the money's gonna be allotted to you for the life of the grant, 20%, excuse me, 25% before you make your purchase. So if you get approved for the grant and they made it sound like everyone's gonna get approved, uh, you get that 25% before you make your purchase. So um, I think it's a you know something we should take advantage of. The uh, Mr. Mayor, you're the one who has to sign it for me to submit it. It's due by April 30th. So uh, if the committee has no problem with that, the um, the plan is for us to purchase uh, two, two cameras for the next three years for a total of six cameras. That'll cover um, to provide a camera for every officer in the department plus spares. And also, uh, I structured it so uh, there's going to be a need for an additional um, charging station. But we're going to give the bulk of our money um, when that charging station is needed. So my plan is to uh, ask for 25%, uh, actually 33% of the money this year in total, and then 33% in mid-year, and then another 33% at the end. So. Um, Excuse me, that's the number of cameras you're going to buy, but the money is going to be split up 25%, 50%, 25%. So we'll be drawing 50% of our money on the year that we need to buy the actual accessories for the camera. Chief, the, uh, the, the, the cameras in this, in this program, are they uh, common or similar technology to what you have? It's, it's compatible? What, what they're doing is they're pretty much just doing basic math they got $57 million. Uh, you submit your application, how many cameras you plan on purchasing the next, over the next five years or next three years, whatever that department's needs are. And then you're gonna take that whole number for the entire state and divide it by 57 million. So you can continue to buy, buy the cameras that you have okay. and the, the amount of money that you're gonna be allotted is based on six times what the division is between 57 million and the total number of cameras requested. So it's your choice what you get. Correct. Good. So um, I got to go ahead to get you the sign on, Mr. Mayor. Why don't, why don't just do a why don't just do a quick motion, make a motion authorizing the mayor to sign the application, the chief to submit the application, and vote aye. You know, a quick motion for the record. All right. So moved. Second. 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 Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. I'll leave Thank that in you. your box, Mr. Mayor. All right. And, um, and Chief, there was no um, a formal resolution that was needed in the packet? No, the, uh, the no. formal resolution will come uh, when the award is made. Uh, made. 
uh, okay. given. So they, they said when you receive it, the award of the grant, they'll give us another packet, which will include sample resolution. All right, great. Okay. Uh, next step is uh, the painting of the pedestrian crossings. I got a hold of Mr. Berkeley, and uh, he, he indicated that last year with the COVID, uh, they, they did not get to their uh, list of items to do, but he ensured me that we're on the list for when they start painting the pedestrian crossings. I, I asked for all of them on Burlington Avenue, as well as the one on Cooper by the um, basketball courts. So that's that's on the, on the list, Cooper and Hickory. Um, Franklin Street, the flashing light. We got a phone call today. Uh, as of right now, if the weather holds up, the light should be uh, erected on uh, April 20th. I believe that's the next Tuesday. And uh, so that light should be functioning by Wednesday, we hope. So uh, keep your fingers crossed with the weather. Uh, and hopefully the contractor doesn't back out with an emergency job, which he's done twice already on us. Uh, 507 Burlington Avenue, I was asked to uh, look into that. Um, Mr. Brickley acknowledged my email and, and forwarded to, uh, to, I guess, the project manager. And I'm um, waiting his response to get an exact date when that's anticipated to actual work to begin. Okay. Okay. That says all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any information on the crosswalks for Newton's Landing? I think I emailed Richard and the chief maybe a month or so ago, and it was going to go to Harry at some point. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Foss is going to give us a, uh, an, uh, I guess, a, a quote, or I, I would say more of an estimate of linear feet, uh, how much it would cost, uh, you know, taking into account the uh, striping that needs to be done in Newton, New, excuse me, Newton's Landing as well as River's Edge to try to get a price um, or an idea how much it would be. And Mr. Schwab is going to try to direct the drawing of the funds, depending how much it is from the appropriate, uh, you know, line item, whether it be the capital or the road project. So uh, Mr. Fox, we're just waiting for him to give us what his industry standard is per, per linear foot. Thank you. He has a total number of linear feet that it would, it would take. Okay. Anything else, Chief? That's all. All right. Thank you. Uh, administration, Mrs. Lohr. Um, Just want to report on this uh, past Saturday, we had the um, shredding event for Delanco residents, and we had a pretty good turnout. Um, also, I don't think John, is John on? If not, I'll report on the, also Saturday, this past Saturday was the community cleanup day, lots of dumpsters out of Public Works. Um, I did take some things up and a lot of TVs, electronics, wood, uh, tires, all kinds of waste brought up. So we had a lot of residents take advantage of both the cleanup day and the shredding day. And Saturday, April 24th is the townwide yard sale. Again, we will be um, encouraging everyone to continue with their social distancing and uh, practices for the yard sale. And not quite sure yet if uh, EMS and fire are gonna move forward with their um, hoagie sale. Yeah. Um, they are going they to. Are. They are. They are. Great. Yeah, and also are. haven't heard um, about the scouts, if they're gonna be doing their famous pork roll and cheese. Uh, that's still not to be determined. Also, if the library will be having any uh, type of event for the townwide yard sale. Uh, we still haven't heard from the library yet. So uh, that's all I have right now. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't see Mr. Fenimore out there from Public Works. I looked on page two. Yeah, I didn't. I don't see him. He's not on tonight. All right. I did uh, speak with Mr. Fenimore late this afternoon, and he reported, uh, amongst uh, other things, uh, 70 tires they received. And uh, the county wanted them uh, cleaned before they would accept them. So Mr. Fenimore was out there with his scrub brush and high pressure hose washing tires. So. All right, uh, Township Committee will have our reports next week, but is there anything that any committee member wants to, that's timely and needs to get out to, for this week? All right, 
don't see or hear any comments there. All right, consent agenda. Consent agenda items are considered to be routine, will be enacted in a single motion. Any item requiring discussion uh, will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Uh, let me back up a moment. Uh, Kate, you had a proclamation for one of our- Yeah, I did. Uh, Mrs. James, Eleanor James, um, her 100th birthday was on October the 8th, or excuse me, April the 8th, and I presented her with a proclamation and a bouquet of flowers. And um, for those of you who knew Mrs. James, uh, she was very active in the church, but she also drove a school bus for over 30 years in Delanco. And um, I just want to add a comment that I was talking to my daughter on the phone the other night, and I said I presented a um, proclamation to Mrs. James for her 100th birthday. She says, Mom, that's my school bus driver. So Michelle went to St. Joe's and Holy Cross, and um, Mrs. James drove that route as well. So um, I thought it was really nice that Michelle remembered her, and um, she was thrilled. I had a nice picture of her with her five sons, and I did post it on Facebook and I sent it to uh, Beverly Half to be uh, put in the Beverly B. So um, she was thrilled, absolutely thrilled. And they had a big celebration for her on Saturday. So it was nice. Very nice, well done putting that together. All right, consent agenda resolution 2021-55 uh, authorizing change order number four for the West Avenue and Babe Ruth ball field improvement project. Um, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Uh, can I have something removed from the consent? Yeah, thank you. I, I got ahead of my skates here. Uh, yeah. Is there any item that somebody, anybody wants removed for separate consideration? Yes, under the approval of business licenses, I would like to remove uh, my own 2021-013 and 2021-001. It's a new one. I would like them voted on separately. I have a conflict. What numbers are those again, Mr. Brown? 2021-001 mm -hmm. and 2021-013. 013, okay. Yep. So we'll take those two off consent. All right. Thanks for catching that, John. Uh, let's see, where was I? Uh, resolution 2021-56, uh, resolution for project completion and authorization for final payment group improvements to West Avenue and Babe Ruth Fields. Resolution-57, uh, resolution authorizing professional services for Field of Dreams Phase 5 event lawn improvements. Resolution-58, refund of tax overpayment. Uh, resolution-59, uh, refund of overpayments, dog licenses. Resolution-60, uh, resolution to cancel and refund property taxes due to total veteran exemption pursuant to NJSA 54-4-330A. Payment of bills, account uh, current fund, uh, $1,313,050.48. Payroll, $209,946.54. Capital fund, $124,034.36. Dog fund, $3.00. Escrow trust, uh, $4,976 even. Municipal open space, $1,591.20. Approval of minutes, uh, February 22nd to March 1st, March 15th, and March 22nd. Uh, approval of business licenses. Uh, let's see, 2021, let's see, 001 we're deleting. So 002 through 12, and then 14 through 16. Did I get that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, approval of consent agenda. Motion, please. So moved. Second. Mr. Ouellette. Second. That was me. Christine. Second by Ms. Holland. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Ouellette. Yes. And Mr. Templeton. Yes. Thank you. And separately, a uh, business license 2021-001 uh, and uh, 013. Uh, motion, please. So moved. Second. Uh, motion by Mr. Ouellette, second by Ms. Holland. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Abstain. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Ouellette. Yes. 
Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Uh, meetings now open to the public for comments and questions, session two. Uh, any comments or questions that have come in for this uh, part two, Mrs. Lohr? Let me check the chat. I don't see anything typed in the chat. Um, residents are uh, publicly reminded to unmute. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, unmute so that we can hear you or type your comment into the chat function. Do you have any questions or comments? State your name, please, and uh, your address. This is public comment session two. Hearing and seeing no, no hands raised and no comments. Nothing in chat. questions section of the meeting is now closed to the public. Correspondence, please. Um, again, uh, I have some uh, correspondence received for next week's um, mm -hmm. cannabis discussion. I'll hold those till next week. Other than that, no additional correspondence, Mayor. All right. Um, status of coronavirus disease, COVID-19. Uh, as you know, um, the uh, numbers have been going up or have, have remained high. Uh, the school is, uh, I believe, all virtual for the coming week, and uh, the county numbers are still fairly high. Uh, fortunately, the vaccination numbers or percentages are increasing, and it's a little easier to get appointments. Um, county Health Department call last week uh, uh, asked the municipalities to check with uh, uh, their apartment complexes or congregate living, or you know that. Uh, outside the nursing home category. And uh, I circulated, uh, checked in with the, the uh, grapevine at Zerberg and also at Abundant Life. Uh, never never did receive or talk to anybody at Abundant Life, but I've left messages. Uh, uh, the goal was the county wanted to identify areas that have been missed where they can uh, come out with a mobile clinic and uh, give vaccinations uh, on site to uh, uh, residents of those, uh, those uh, those facilities. So I'll keep pursuing that. Um, let's see, status of the township committee meetings as far as uh, we'll continue to operate on on remotely and virtually uh, through the Zoom platform, uh, I guess for the foreseeable future, so. Yeah, and Mayor, the reason I had listed through May 17th, that is our um, public hearing for the budget. I have to advertise for that and we have to put in there whether it will be um, at the municipal building or via the Zoom. So I wanted to confirm that, that we would continue with the Zoom platform through at least May 17th for publication purposes for the budget hearing. All right. Any, any uh, questions or comments from the committee on those topics? All right, discussion items. Uh, New Jersey DCA Local Recreation Improvement Grant Opportunity. I believe Mr. Schwab had uh, circulated uh, or forwarded the email uh, that he received a couple days ago on that uh, with the, the grant program. And uh, any any feedback or comments on, on what we can apply for or seek some uh, additional support with uh, trying to fulfill some local goals here. I was gonna ask Harry if he had gotten a chance to look at it, whether it's something he thinks he could put together to help us uh, find out if any of that could get funded. Yeah, um, thanks Richard. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's, I, the, the town has a good chance of getting a grant. Um, however, to get the grant, you're gonna have to put up matching funds. Um, that's not mandatory, but that's, Pretty much puts you on the top of the list and it's, and it's pretty competitive so if you don't do matching funds odds are you won't you won't get anything um but but there are funds out there and what you want to look for is uh recreational it, it's 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 basically designed um because of covid to to help out recreational areas um so if you had a community center the fields um, what they like to do is they like to create new areas, um, especially in densely populated, populated areas where kids need space. Um, th that's what would get you higher up on, on the list. Um, but again, it's 
it is a matching fund. If you don't do the matching funds, odds are you're not going to get the grant. But we did budget for a number of these items, so certainly matching funds would mean yep. that we'd be spending less. I don't know if they would look and say, well, you already you know, included in your capital budget these items, therefore you, they don't, you can't apply for a grant for them. Yeah, they, they, that, that wouldn't matter. As long as you're putting out money that to match what they're putting out, that, that would qualify. Okay. And all of these things, other than uh, the 200 ash remediation, 200 ash remediation would imply there's no question we'd be headed for recreation there. You couldn't right. ask for remediation money. It's like using open space money. Now you've made that commitment because from now on, that's the only option. So that's the risk of that particular one. All the other ones are maintenance items. Um, they aren't creating new areas, but you still think it's worth submitting? The FOD irrigation, the Field of Dreams yeah. parking lot repair, the uh, asphalt path, maybe all the way from Newton's Lonely Boulevard to the park, and maybe the recoding of the basketball courts. Yeah, I, I those think those things qualify. The, the, the recoding of the courts, um, the asphalt trail, um, I don't think the, the, they would qualify. The irrigation, I, I mean, it would qualify, but you're not going to be very high on the list. Um, for that type of thing, they're looking for for new areas and, and improving areas mm -hmm. to, to get the uh, the public out there to enjoy. They're the suggesting outdoors. that none of these things probably are worth applying for. Just maybe the trail and the basketball courts. But uh, and I and I didn't um, the the, the two hundred ash again that kind of boxes you in. But if that was going to be slotted for recreation, that would be a very good. Candidate for, for, for the grant. What's what's the timeline on the grant? May. May so it's, it's due May 24th, and I assume it's money that they want to get out ASAP. That's the other yeah. issue. These are these are projects that were pretty much ready to go. I that's a shovel ready uh, probably gets you up a little higher. It does. Mm -hmm. So we're ready to go with that. So yeah. I would I would apply for them, Harry, for the parking lot for the the uh, pathway along the Field of Dreams there to meet the county. I mean, I would definitely apply for them. I mean, there's, what harm is applying for them? What, it, what would the cost be uh, for the township for your fee to put that together? Yeah, you, our, our fee would be under $1,000. Yeah. I would include the irrigation anyway, because what it's going to do is improve our fields. And um, I mean, it's definitely used by the by the youth that keeps them busy so I mean I, I think it's worth a shot because it's improvement and uh, they're asking for improvement so it, it, it it's going to improve our fields if we have that additional pump in there so it, it, what it would but it really wouldn't score that high honestly no what, what if we what if we added to the irrigation irrigating the uh, vent lawn? Would that add to it? Because we're now going to make that a much more useful. If you get a grant for it, we weren't going to do it with our own money. If right. you get a grant for it, maybe it's worth trying. I don't know. Well, the, the event launch is a different animal out there. I mean, that's, uh, you know, as I, as I spoke at the pre-construction meeting, um, you know, the, it's, it was, I think, in one of the Taylor documents to specify that that was to be a, a turf or grass Correct. out there. Correct. Uh, it's it's going to get driven on. It's going to get uh, you know various things uh, you know parked on it at various times through different events, and it it doesn't I don't think needs a high maintenance uh, okay. requirement. Uh, yeah, we didn't want the event lawn irrigated because we don't want it to look like a soccer field so that they play soccer on it. You know, uh, that's, I assumed that's, it had a lot to do with how much money it was going to cost to create the irrigation. I thought that was the issue. If you can get the irrigation for as part of a grant, whether or not anyone would object to it, but I understand there are other reasons to not irrigate it. Right. So the bottom line. Now the question is, Harry, do you apply as a group or do you apply separate projects? And then each one stands on its own. I, I I'm not sure how that how the best approach would be to do that. Um, as, as long as 
we, we could apply for, for, for more than one. Um, and what so they if you apply, they that's why do, if you apply for the for the uh, field of dreams for the irrigation well, they turn that one down, but maybe we get the other ones approved. I don't want one to pull down the others. But if each one is right. looked at on its own, we say this is our top priority. Like when we do state aid, we may give multiple streets and say number one, number two, number three, and then we'll see what they're willing to do. Correct. You can do the application that way, breaking it down into different projects, yes. So is this maybe. an opportunity to do anything with the skate park? Like to resurface that area, or is that still a no-go for insurance? Yeah, I would say that's that's a, a, a as soon as you want to do anything there, you got to start with the compliance all over again. Right. Would, that's why we haven't touched it. We did touch it. We, we spent a lot of money on it about five or six years ago because yeah. it was listed as the unsafe things, but the design itself is an ancient design that no longer is, meets standards. Is there anything else? I mean, I know it wouldn't be popular to just remove it, but if it's just a kind of falling into being a, a dangerous recreation spot, can we take that out and, and put something else? That's what you're talking about. about. If, if rec makes that a priority, makes that a priority, then we deal with it. This is whether or not grant. The key thing is because we already have funds available for some of these things, we could make commitments to do matching funds because there's sufficient money available. We rearrange instead of 100% of this project and do 50% of this one, 50% of that one, and use the grant money, and we get twice as much done for the same dollars. Adding something new means we have to come up with matching funds. Well, and I was thinking if we didn't money. really care, you know, if we were just yeah. kind of throwing it out there to, to resurface that. Right. Well, the basketball courts had already been, we applied for county open space money and didn't, they didn't give us enough money to do both the event lawn and the basketball courts. So that's already been a priority for REC. Yeah. And so we already have all the information on it. So it's a question of getting money for it. Gotcha. That's the difference. Yeah. But, okay. yeah. Um, to circle back to uh, 200 ASH, uh, would it be feasible to ask the committee if we can make a decision on 200 ASH as far as retaining it as open space or not by the this grant deadline? And uh, prepare uh, an application for remediation, uh, irrespective of, of the building status. But just make that 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 simple decision whether we, we're going to retain it at open space or not. Because to add to that, uh, Mayor, the, they they do pay for environmental studies, environmental cleanups, and things like that if you're going to use it for recreation. Yeah, I noticed that, which is why I brought it up. Yeah, that would okay. mean the May 17th meeting you have to authorize the application to meet your May 24th deadline. Mm -hmm. That's up to you guys. So do you want to consider that as a, a decision point or or um, or not? Yeah, I think it should be used as open space. I was at a park last weekend, Easter weekend in New York State. Uh, if you want to Google it and look at it in Watertown, New York called uh, Veterans Memorial Park. And it's along a river, uh, very similar to the width of the Rancocas Creek and uh, with park benches. And it was just reminding me of something that we could do. Yeah. They actually harness their river and generate power from it. So they have a waterfall up the river, upstream in the middle of the city. Um, so it was pretty cool. And the whole time I was standing there, I was just thinking about our 200 ash. Right in the middle of two bridges, you know, looking at both bridges and a uh, beautiful waterway. So if there's any money we could get from this grant, um, you know, possibly even, well, I know the other properties um, are going to be discussed. So Maybe include this part of your exec discussion, which includes that issue. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait till then. Okay. All right. But um, it's a thought. Okay. Right. Uh, so why, why don't we move forward at least to have Harry put together the applications for the two projects that he thinks has the greatest chance and possibly the, okay. the pump, the well as a third case money available. Okay. And then we'll we can discuss that. Aye. Aye. Yes. 
Aye. All right. Go to it, Mr. Fox. Okay, we'll go. Uh, next item, surface transportation project requests. This, uh, I think, was something that came down out of uh, Congressman Kim's office. And it was, um, it looks to be a little higher level or bigger projects, but I don't know if we have something that's, that could be competitive to, com to get something like that. Yeah, my, sure. my, my opinion on that, um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's federal money. Um, and if you don't have, I always use this as a benchmark, if you're not spending $300,000 or more with federal money, it's not worth doing it. Okay. There's the red tape and the extra cost for engineering administration, it, it really is not worth it. Um, okay. And it, it's, this is highly competitive. Um, the odds of getting it would be very slim. Yeah, but it's not part of the big infrastructure, uh, you know, federal money going to be going around? Would be, would be, would we be foolish not to get in on it? This is this is different. This is a it's it's a it's a tip and a tip um, program, um, and it's it's done by DVRPC um, and the state, and it's they have a, a programs listed every five years for, for very large projects, the 295 project type thing. Um, we're not listed on, on the tip because um, we don't have any large enough to, to put okay. on that. So this is just extra funds that they have basically didn't get used up on other projects. Um, and it's, again, it's not that much money. It's, it's highly competitive. And what you have to do to actually apply for it and then administrate it is just, it's onerous. Um, just the application process on our end would, would cost several thousand dollars. All right. Well, I guess that answers that. Any questions uh, from committee on that? All right. Hearing none. Uh, anything else, uh, Richard, to add there or Janice before we uh, finish up the public session for the moment? All right, hearing none, uh, let's see, uh, resolution for executive session. It's going to be resolution 2021-62, uh, authorizing executive session under, let's look at the list here, attorney client, um, land, let's see, contract negotiations, and I, I have a personnel matter. All right. Uh, motion, please. Also, just note that we may take action after executive session this evening. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so, for the public, what will happen is that we're, the Township Committee is going to pass a resolution to go in executive session. Um, then, after executive session, the Township Committee will return to public session. There may be additional business conducted in public session after the executive session. So if you want to stay on in the um, waiting room or uh, that, is, uh, you can do that. Did I hear a motion for executive? Still moved. Motion by Mr. Brown. And second. 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 Kate. By Ms. Fitzpatrick. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Dennis. Yeah. Am I, is it the chief, Harry and Doug as well in the executive? I think it's just Mr. Heinold. I don't know okay. that we need. Uh, uh, do you need me for anything for Spanker and Gletto? Uh, Not unless Doug does. You're muted, Doug. Doug. You're on mute. Um, unless anybody has any questions on what Harry submitted, uh, I don't think we need him to come in. Are you happy, Harry, with that inspection? Um, 
it's it's adequate. Let's let's bring Harry in and, and yeah, we'll do that first, right? I think right. you might have another issue too. All right. So it'll be Mr. Heinhold, uh, Mr. Fox, the committee, Mrs. Lohr, uh, and Ms. Mr. Schwab. Okay. And the chief does not need to join. Correct? Good night, yeah. chief. Good night, Good night. Chief. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night off. Great. Thank you. All right. I'm, in, I'm uh, sending the invite now. All right. We've got uh, that back in. We're back in public session. I think just go right into the resolution, correct? Yeah. yeah uh, the resolution. Oh, it's in my. You want me to read it, Janice? Read the yeah, title. Can you read the title? It's uh, Resolution 2021. Did you have a number you gave to it yet? 63. 2021-63, which is a resolution authorizing the transfer of phases 2A and 2B occupied by misfits of the Stanker and Galetto redevelopment area from GR Urban Renewal LLC, Stanker and Galetto, to CRE Pro Vendor Delanco Urban Renewal A LLC and CRE Pro Vendor Delanco Urban Renewal B LLC Pro Vendor. What was the uh, resolution number, Janice? 2021-63. 63, thank you. Mm -hmm. And do I have a motion for the resolution as read? So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Fitzpatrick, second by Mr. Ouellette. Uh, roll call, please. <clears throat> Mr. Brown. Yes. I'm trying to get to a roll call. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. All right. Anything else you need, Mr. Einhold, on that? No, we'll uh, we'll be back on the other issues as they develop. Okay. Thank you. And we have a vacancy on the Delanco Sewage Authority at appointment. Uh, it's been uh, delayed for a variety of reasons since the expiration the end of January. And I'd like to uh, make a motion to uh, for Mr. William Madalevich to be appointed to that position. Mayor, are you making that motion or are you asking for a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. If I can. So there is a motion and seconded. Uh, on to appoint William Madlevich to the Delanco Sewage Authority for a term of five years. Mayor, would you like a roll call? Please. Mr. Brown. No. Mrs. Patrick. No, and I'd like to state my reason. Um, the fact that the chairman uh, made his recommendation based on his interviews and the service of Phil Jenkins for 20 plus years during a time where we're doing a major project in town and uh, has no offense against Bill Madalevitz. I certainly know Bill's qualifications and what he's done on joint land use board and shade tree. And I would never think of asking someone else to take his place on either one of those boards had he asked to be reappointed. So I think this is an unfair um, change. That's how I feel. Ms. Yeah. Holland. Uh, yes. Mr. Olet. Yes. And Mr. Templeton. Needed. Mayor, you are you're muted. I still work. I'm sorry. Yes. Mr. Templeton, roll call. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anything else for tonight's business? 
Not for me. Hearing none, motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well done. Good night, Good night everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night.